Hey Pretty Girl Club, welcome back to another video. This is a part of the privilege stacking series. Um, on this channel I talk a lot about social climbing and stuff like that. And so I kind of wanted to talk about what my daily and weekly and monthly routines are so that I can meet my social climbing goals. So first I guess I'll start off with what my goals are. And the reason I'm talking about this is because if you have goals for yourself or like if you want to level up, you have to know where you are leveling up to. So a lot of content creators, they say, oh, I'm leveling up, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I'm gonna make sure that I have like, that I get my bags and stuff. But it's like, what is your actual personal goal? So how do you want to level up? Do you want to level up your looks? Do you want to level up your finances? Do you want to move to a better neighborhood? Because I know that for me, um, I talk a lot about decentering men and stuff, and I've told you guys on this channel that what I place at the center of my identity, like what I center my life around, is my mental health. And in order for me to have mental health, I do need to feel like I am meeting my social climbing goals. So one of my goals was to live in a nice part of town. So living in a beautiful urban neighborhood, like living in the middle of the city, but it's not the hood part of the city. So I don't mind if some people from the hood like to travel and like be tourists and stuff in my area, but that was one of my social climbing goals. It genuinely makes me feel high status and it makes me feel wealthy, even though I live in a one bedroom apartment because I don't have any kids or anything, so that's all I need. But it really does make me feel wealthy and high status and it does increase my mental health to have a living space that reflects where I want to be in life. I've noticed that if I live in a dusty ass, like leveled down apartment, or I live in a leveled down household with a bunch of other people, first of all, I do not do well with roommates. Oh my gosh, I need to make a story time series about roommates because in the past, like when I was in college and I had random roommates, a lot of times the roommates would actually get jealous of my level up journey. And I know that they were jealous because they would admit it. Or they would say that I was stuck up because I was trying to like work multiple jobs and stuff and kind of save up my money and still trying to dress cute. So for me personally, I don't really do well living with roommates because a lot of people, once they get really close to me, like once they live with me or once they start to examine me a lot, they start to um, get a closer look at my daily routines. And I've noticed that a lot of people in general, they get very triggered and very intimidated by my work ethic. Um, I don't really consider myself to be like the most, I mean, I'm not Beyonce, you know what I mean? Like I'm just a regular person, but I have been around people where they're like, oh my gosh, like how do you have so much energy? Like how are you doing all of these things? And it's because um, that's just a part of how I choose to meet my goals. I don't really like to waste my time doing things that are like not benefiting me. So even when I used to work at a nine to five job, even when I was working in the cubicle, I would be listening to like live streams and stuff. I would listen to like Shira Seven or like Princella. Actually, no, not Princella because she wasn't, I didn't know who she was yet. But I would listen to like those long live streams where they talk about leveling up or where they talk about uh, something that's going to be applicable to my life. Sometimes I do like listening to music when I'm working out and stuff, but I have a specific routine. So like if I want to be very productive and I'm in a productive mode, I will listen to audio of some sort. So like a podcast, I'll listen to an audio book um, or something where a person is talking. And then if I'm in more of a carefree mood and I just kind of want like an endorphin boost, I will listen to music in the car and just kind of sing along. And I don't, I don't want to think about anything. I just want to sing to some lyrics and like just drive to the grocery store or something. So I have specific routines for when I do each activity in my daily life. And those routines actually help me. Like I purposely do that because number one, I enjoy listening to stuff. And then number two, I know the benefits of doing those things when it comes to my mental health. One of my social climbing goals is to be so good at self-care to the point where I don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars on doctors and dentists and uh, therapists and psychologists and people to do my manicures and pedicures. That has always been one of my goals is to become so resourceful to the point where I can be my own hairstylist if necessary. I can do my own trims. I actually do do my own hair trims and stuff like that. So I've always wanted to be able to have really good skill sets and very diverse skill sets so that I can meet my own personal goals faster and more efficiently. 
because the way that I think of it is who knows me better than myself? Like nobody. So a doctor or somebody where I'm just going into their office, oftentimes I'm just going to be seen as another patient. And if I take the time to invest in doing my hair care routine, like sitting down for two hours and having the deep conditioner in my hair and stuff and going out of my way to make my own homemade facials, all of those are a part of my social climbing journey because then when I go out into the real world, like just the other day, one of my friends was like, oh my gosh, your skin looks so pretty. Your skin looks like glass. And the reason that my skin, I don't think it looks like glass or like super perfect, but the reason that it has been looking good lately is because I have been researching about the LED light therapy. So I went on Amazon and I got one of those LED lights for myself, like just the little $50 one, the little handheld one. I got that and started doing my own facials and stuff instead of trying to rely on going to the spa. So that is an example of me privilege stacking and social climbing. It's me using my own knowledge, using my secret knowledge basically, or knowledge that is not well known because most people don't know that you can do a lot of very expensive spa treatments at home. And it might be an investment at first, like if you get the devices to keep at home, but it's very like worth it in the end, or at least for me, it has been worth it in the end. The next thing I'm planning on doing is laser hair removal. I'm gonna get one of those machines from Amazon and just like get it and do my own version of it. Because when I tried to book it at a spa, they were about to charge me like almost a thousand dollars to do my whole body. So I was like, no, absolutely not. I'm just gonna pay 80 bucks and just do it, do the best that I can and just keep doing it over the course of the next few months or whatever. And then hopefully that'll help me to make progress. If the machine breaks, even if I get a new one, that's only $200 versus $1,000 for the same service. And by the way, when I talk about things like privilege stacking so that I can social climb or kind of become upwardly mobile, that's what I mean when I use the term social climb. It just means kind of moving up in society. Um, what I'm trying to ultimately achieve with these things is I am trying to achieve the soft life for myself or the softest life possible. I do consider myself to have a soft life now, but I also feel like your life can always be quote unquote softer. And when I use the term soft life, I don't mean laying around by the pool 24 seven and just like soaking up the sun. For me, that actually would get boring after a while. So I feel like the term soft life is unique to every single person. So for example, if you are thinking about what soft life you want, you might want to think like, okay, what, what are my hobbies? Or like, if money didn't exist, what would I be doing? Um, if I had all the time in the world to invest in myself, what would I be doing? Would I be like trying to change the world somehow? Cause I know that I'm the type of person where like, I really do want to feel like I am changing the world. I'm the type of person who does want to feel like I am influencing an entire culture. And I feel like the best way that I can do that is via social media and the internet because anybody in the world has access to the internet. So for me, um, I've always wanted to be able to leave a legacy somehow, and I've always wanted to be able to utilize my skills to be my own boss or not have to work for anybody or, you know, be able to like do my own freelance stuff or contracted work or things like that. So my definition of the soft life has a lot to do with freedom. Uh, freedom is one of my core values. It's very, very important for me to feel free. I need to feel spiritually free. I need to feel mentally and emotionally free. I need to feel financially free. I do not want to feel confined in any way. I never want to feel trapped. One of the biggest depression triggers for me is if I feel trapped. Trapped in a job, trapped in a marriage, trapped in a religion or a certain mindset. Like I remember when I was super religious, I used to get upset because I would be like, okay, I'm doing all these things. I'm praying, I'm tithing, I'm like reading the Bible, I'm being a good person. And I am still not like having these blessings or whatever that are supposed to pour down. So it's like, I'm, I'm not a millionaire. I am still not kind of social climbing. And the church has taught me that Oh, if you just put God first, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and all those things will be added unto you. Like everything else in life will just fall into place. And it was not falling into place. What was more empowering for me was no longer depending on religion and spirituality and taking the power back for myself and being my own savior and saying, hey, nobody's coming to save me. 
Nobody's going to fall out of the sky and like give me money or give me the perfect life. I have to go out and do that for myself. And another thing is when it comes to your privilege stacking journey, it does not have to be hard. So that's another thing that I learned is it's not supposed to be something where it like sucks and you know, you're just, you have to wake up at 4 a.m. and do all this crap. No, the way that I've learned how to do it, because I've been kind of on this journey for, I don't know, for the past almost 10 years now, since I was about 22, so I'm 32 now. And what I've learned is that the way that you should do it or the way that worked for me is just experimenting with different routines or experimenting with different habits and stacking those habits over time and then deciding for yourself, okay, do I like working, uh, waking up at 4 a.m.? So I actually did try that before. When I was in college, I was like, okay, let me try waking up at 5 a.m. because my classes start at nine. So if I wake up at five, I can get my workout done and I can get all of my homework done. And then I have class from nine to six. And then after 6 p.m., when I come home from class, I don't have to do anything else for the rest of the evening. I can relax, I can do whatever I want. So when I was in college, being the 5 a.m. baddie that woke up and like made my smoothie and stuff, that worked for me at that time. That's also how I started drinking coffee. But anyway, I'm really proud of myself because it has been about seven days and I've only had one cup of coffee. I have replaced my coffee with either black tea or green tea because I'm just testing out this new routine to see if my body reacts better, which it has been reacting better so far. Um, I've noticed I do have a little bit more mental clarity. I don't have kind of this overstimulated feeling that I used to have when I would drink too much caffeine. So that's a side note. But anyway, I started getting down to the nitty gritty when it came to the type of lifestyle I wanted to live. So what I started thinking about was, okay, are there any people that I kind of admire? Okay, so I admire, I'll use Beyonce as an example. I think that she has a really great work ethic. Okay, does she have any habits that I could potentially try out and see if I like those habits? And if I don't like them, that's totally fine because not every habit you try is going to work. Okay, I noticed that she drinks lemon water. Maybe I will try putting a, a couple of drops of lemon in my water. Actually, I have my lemon water right next to me right now. So that's the way that I started gradually um, kind of privilege stacking for myself. I started studying other people that I felt were kind of doing a good job or people where I was like, wow, how do they know how to speak five languages? Like that's something that's really cool. Like I wanna learn how to do that. I wanna be fluent in five languages. That would be great in terms of my fluid identity. That would really help me with privilege stacking because think about it, you could start a YouTube channel in another language, you could start a business in another country, so that would be cool. And what I did was I would look up people on YouTube and stuff like, okay, they learn five languages, this is how they did it. They immersed themselves in the language. They just kind of flooded themselves with that language and they forced themselves to speak it. But that is another one of my life goals. Like by the time I get old, I do want to also be a polyglot. A polyglot is a person that can speak a lot of languages. And so I just started to kind of daydream in my mind because for me, daydreaming is fun. So I started kind of like dreaming again and thinking, what kind of girl do I see myself becoming? Or what kind of woman do I see myself becoming? How do I want my life to look when I'm 40? How do I want my life to look when I'm 50 or 60? But if you can't think that far, that's okay. You could start thinking, hey, how do I want my life to look over the next month and over the next week? Because I do that a lot myself. Like in the Patreon, I talk about having like micro goals and setting those specific goals for yourself and then just kind of checking in with yourself. Hey, how was my diet this month? Okay, I said I was gonna eat $80 a month worth of vegetables or about you know two to three servings of vegetables per day. How am I doing this week? Okay, I failed this week, no worries at all. Let me just go to the store really quick and get myself some vegetables so I can get back on track. I've noticed that a lot of times if you come from a family where they are gaslighters or you come from uh, being around a lot of people where they're jealous and haters, they try to withhold this information from you. And so that's why on this channel, I try to talk a lot about leveling up and privilege stacking and social climbing, kind of like being upwardly mobile in society so that you can have the life that you want to live. So if that means being wealthy, if that means living in the suburbs, if that means moving to another country or moving to another city or getting out of poverty, graduating college, going back to school, uh, being a good mom, starting a business, 
whatever the soft life means to you or like whatever the end result is of your level up, that is what you are supposed to be striving towards. And the way that I like to think of it is there's no such thing as, okay, I'm just perfectly leveled up. I don't have to do anything anymore. No, what I've learned is that the real fun is in the journey. The fun is like in the process of doing it. The fun is not once you've already achieved it because I realized in my early 20s that I was jumping from one achievement to the next and I was not able to enjoy my current achievements that I had. I wasn't able to enjoy the moment because once I got one internship, I would be like, okay, I got this internship, now let me apply for the next one. So it's like I wasn't stopping to soak it in and the whole point of having goals is so that you can actually enjoy the results. You don't wanna like meet your goal and then be like, okay, on to the next. That's actually one of my biggest regrets from my 20s was constantly working towards certain goals and achieving them, but I never stopped to actually enjoy them. So when I was, when I had like a perfect body, when I finally, I had worked my butt off running seven miles a day for six months straight and eating a damn near perfect diet for six months straight, and I finally got my dream body at the time, and I still did not enjoy it. I remember I wore one outfit that was like this little belly shirt and like some leggings. And that was the only time that I kind of like showed off my body, I guess, or felt like I looked cute enough to show off my body. It was that one time. And then other than that, I was like, okay, on to the next goal. And looking back, that was like one of the dumbest things I could have done because I did not enjoy that new privilege that I had of having a perfect 10 out of 10 body for my standards at the time. So I never... Um, took the time to enjoy it. I just wore one cute outfit for one night, went to a house party and danced with some Dusties and that was it. Like I wasted the opportunity to really enjoy that part of myself or really enjoy like my body. I did not reward myself with new clothes or a new wardrobe. So now I try to work towards goals, but I also try to make a plan of how I'm going to celebrate when I achieve those goals. And by the way, you don't have to wait until you achieve a really big goal in order to celebrate. So like on YouTube, for example, I do a little celebration for myself for every thousand subscribers. So I'm about to hit 12K subs pretty soon. So that's exciting. I'm probably gonna get myself like, I don't know, maybe something good smelling for my apartment or maybe get a new rug or something. I don't know, I'm gonna do something small but special for myself because that's my way of still enjoying everything because if you stop enjoying stuff, you're literally gonna get depressed because it's like, okay, what's the point? Like, oh, I've got all this money, I've got all this stuff, I have a big house, okay, but now what? I'm not enjoying it because I'm constantly chasing the next thing and nothing is ever enough, so it's like you might as well just give up. And that's what makes people depressed over time and that's what makes people miserable. It's because they're not stopping to smell the roses. They're not stopping to savor um, the moment they're not like enjoying the wealth that they built they're not enjoying the uh, the spoils of the things they've achieved looking back I wish I would have been more cocky to be honest like if I could go back to my 20s I would be more cocky I would be more judgmental because when it came to guys I gave the dustiest guys a chance in my 20s it was so ratchet it's like I used to have that Christian mindset of oh no but like people can change and don't judge who he was in the past and God is the provider of money so he doesn't have to have any money or anything like God's in charge of money um, God has all of the riches in heaven so as long as this guy is spiritually rich then I'm good no like if I could go back I would be so much more cocky and I would like try to enjoy myself as much as possible so that's why sometimes on YouTube I probably do sound like cocky and arrogant or whatever but it's like that's just me trying to enjoy the fact that we do have our own community and the fact that we do have a bunch of girls in the pretty girl club and we are all collectively working on our own goals and our own YouTube channels and stuff by the way I recommend every pretty girl have a YouTube channel. It doesn't matter what the channel is about. It doesn't matter if you show your face or not, but there, there are bags when it comes to YouTube. Like you can get a bag from YouTube. And I've also noticed that a lot of people have abandoned YouTube so that they can go back to, uh, so that they can go to TikTok. But TikTok actually pays less than what YouTube pays. And Instagram pays the least out of all of them. Um, so that's that's a part of the reason why I didn't really pop off on TikTok or like keep going because I felt like the rules were too strict and also it's like okay I'm doing all this work trying to resize all of these videos 
so that I can get them banned and get paid 10 cents per thousand views? Like, no. I feel like this video is all over the place today, but that's okay because you guys said you like it when I kind of ramble on and talk about things that I'm kind of working on or whatever. So, and by the way, you guys can always let me know in the comment section um, if you really liked a particular video and you want to see more videos like it. That really helps me to know what kind of content to create. Oh, and speaking of being creative, um, one of the ways that I have been able to privilege stack is I will utilize my creativity and I will always utilize like when I am inspired. So right now, my original plan was to come home and I was probably going to clean up and maybe go to the store or something. But I got inspired, like I just randomly felt inspired to record this video. So I was like, no, let me sit down and record it right now. Because number one, I feel good and I feel like I'm in the mood to do that. And then if it's ever not fun, like sometimes if something becomes uh, too taxing mentally and I get tired of it or something, then I'll stop doing it. But generally speaking, if I'm feeling inspired and pumped up, I am going to use that energy. Because one thing I've noticed is that when you are the pretty girl or when people already view you as having more privilege than them or they already view you as kind of higher up on a social hierarchy, you're going to attract so many ener energy vampires. Like you attract people who want to actually take away from your energy or they want to feed off of your energy. They want to copy what you're doing. They want to follow what you're doing. They want to kind of like replace you in a way. Um, but then they'll be accusing you of trying to replace them. So what I've learned is that anytime I feel a surge of energy, like if I feel very pumped up and excited about something, I'm going to act on it immediately. And if I'm at work or if I'm in the middle of something, but I feel inspired, I'm just going to write down in my notes app in my phone, hey, talk about XYZ on the next video. Or I might put something in my calendar like, okay, I'm going to go walking at the park on Saturday because I just felt inspired to uh, go stop by that park and take out my yoga mat. By the way, I was driving yesterday and I saw this exotical. She was walking down the street. So I was driving on this road. It's almost like a freeway. It's not quite a freeway, but it's like next to a freeway. It's a very, very busy road. But there was this one exotical. She was just walking across the street and she had a yoga mat. And I could tell that she was walking across the street so that she could go on the grass like next to where the busy road was because there's like this really pretty grassy area that nobody is ever on. So it's like a perfect place where there's like shade and stuff. It's kind of secluded because nobody really goes over there. And she literally, I was thinking, wow, she probably just felt inspired. And she was like, fuck it, I'm going to go do my yoga and I'm going to go find some grass because Think about it. Maybe she lived in an apartment or she lived somewhere where there was not a lot of access to grass or maybe she didn't have a car and she could not drive to a park, but she made it work. She was like, no, I'm going to get my yoga mat and I'm going to I'm going to go touch grass. I'm going to do my freaking workout and I'm going to look cute. She had her little cute yoga outfit on and she was just living her best life. In my in my opinion, that's an example of privilege stacking. So she found a privilege in her neighborhood. Like for, for example, let's say she lived in that neighborhood. She was like, okay, no, even though there's no park in this neighborhood, there is a patch of grass that's really pretty that is over on the side of this busy street. And you know, it's kind of secluded. So if I walk off like 10 feet into the grass, like kind of behind the bushes, then I have a private place to do my yoga. Nobody else is going to be watching me and I get to be in nature. So that's what I mean when I say privilege stacking. I mean finding whatever resources are available to you and utilizing them to your advantage. Because like I was saying, I've noticed that a lot of people when they are jealous of you or when they feel like you are more privileged than them, they want you to pull them up by their bootstraps. And I've noticed that a lot of women who are very powerful, you're very pretty, like let's say you're you're kind of owning that dark femininity, you're owning your quote unquote divine feminine or whatever, you're kind of walking in your confidence. I've noticed that people will either try to break your spirit or they will try to make you use that energy on them. I talk a lot about that like when it comes to the Decentering Men series, I talk about how men will actually see your value. It's not that men don't see a woman's value, it's that they do see your value, so much so to the point where they want to exploit it. And so that's why for me personally, I have had to learn to try to keep as much energy as I can like circulating back into myself. So if I feel inspired, instead of 
going to the store and giving a grocery store my money, how about I record something and then I put it on YouTube so that I can help other women who are like me and I get to also have my own money. So instead of me giving someone else money, I'm creating more money for myself. And also for those of you who are like, how do you have this work ethic? How do you like create three videos a day and then you can still work out every day and then you still uh, meal prep for yourself and you cook and clean your own apartment and try to maintain it and still have time for a social life? Well, the way that I do that is because um, I try to do things that do not feel like work. So if it feels like work or if it feels very draining, like if it feels draining to you, it's most likely not your passion. So not every aspect of my YouTube channel is my passion. When it comes to editing, editing is something that I can do. Like I can get a pass on it because I have experience doing it. Um, but I wouldn't say that like I can sit down for eight hours and edit. No, I can sit down for eight hours and talk shit though. That's my real passion. So what I've learned is that sometimes um, doing the other tasks will help you to make room so that you can do your actual level up goals or like so you can do your actual passions. So for example, let's say you don't have a lot of money but you love to draw and you love to paint and you love how it makes you feel mentally, like you love um, the relaxing feeling that you have after you do that. Okay, well then that means it's probably worth the money for you to invest in some markers or some crayons or colored pencils and the reason you should invest in those art tools is because those colored pencils are not just colored pencils for you. Those are things that are increasing your mental health. So yes, colored pencils and a coloring book for you, an adult coloring book, yes, that is actually increasing your mental health, or at least that's how I see it. So for me, my YouTube channel, this increases my mental health. That girl that was walking across that busy ass street just so she could go and do some yoga, she was going across that street because she knows if I do my yoga, that is going to increase my mental health. Having my cute outfit on, taking my yoga mat, going by myself, not depending on a boyfriend to go with me, not depending on friends to go with me, because a lot of people are flaky and they don't have the same goals as you. They don't have the same passions as you. They don't have the same things that increase their mental health. But that girl understood the concept of, no, I need to invest in myself. I am walking across this busy ass street so I can get to the corner because I want to be in nature. That's how important it is for me to be in the middle of nature when I'm doing my yoga. It is important enough to where I feel that it's worth it to walk across this busy street and go to this grassy area that I've never seen anyone else at so that I can do my yoga. It's worth it for me. So in my opinion, that is absolutely social climbing because I can use her as an example again. Not only is she using pretty privilege because she got to exercise uh, practicing her pretty privilege by dressing in her cute little yoga outfit. So she got to say, okay, what outfit do I wanna wear? Oh, this color looks cute on me. Okay, let me put this on. Let me put my hair in a little cute bun. And then she was walking to the grass or whatever. So by the way, being out in nature, it actually does help your brain to release endorphins and stuff like that. Um, the negative ions in the trees that has a positive effect on your brain. So I personally am a big fan of going outside. Even though I love living in the city, I also need to go outside at least like every other day, I've noticed. So I'm trying to take care of my skin and stuff and like put on sunscreen and all that. I'm kind of bad at it, but that is something that's worth it for me. So the same goes for that girl. She went and did all that so that she could increase her mental health. So there are gonna be different things that cause you to have the soft life than someone else. So for you, the soft life might mean you are, you know, you're know, you doing this mental health activity every single day. Hopefully this audio is a part of your mental health activities. That's the purpose of me uploading these videos with different timestamps. And I also designed the editing of my videos so that you can choose to either watch them or you can choose to just listen to them and you, you won't miss anything that's like super important as far as the images. So I've designed them so that both people, you know, people who want to watch them or people who want to just listen to them in their earphones, you can do that too. But that's one of the things that I like to do though. Um, I like to have a mental health routine. So a part of privilege stacking for me is taking care of my mental health because mental health, in my opinion, mental health is actually the biggest privilege that you can have. Because if you're depressed or suicidal or you have PTSD, you've got anxiety, you have like a whole bunch of like mental illnesses stacked on top of each other, then any decision you make 
is coming from a place of being mentally ill. So you're not making decisions from a sound place. Um, so that's why for me, I have learned to prioritize my mental health. So a part of my mental health routine is I like to do things like going on walks in nature. I like to go to the gym. But when I go to the gym, so my goal for 2024 is I want to do no sweat workouts as like 80% of my workouts. I don't want my workouts to be where I'm drenched in sweat the whole time anymore. I don't want that. That was my goal last year and I did that and I'm glad that I did that. But this year I'm trying something new. So I prefer very low intensity workouts that take a long time so that I can listen to my audiobook or you know, go on a leisurely walk around the city or go on a really big long hike like on a mountain or something where it takes like an hour to get to the top of the hill and then it takes like another hour for me to get back down. I like doing that because that increases my mental health. So what I will do is listen to audiobooks and stuff and I like doing the lower intensity workouts because it helps me to focus more on the audiobook. It helps me to focus more on what I'm listening to as opposed to, oh shit, I'm trying to catch my breath. Oh my gosh, my heart is beating so fast. Oh my gosh, I have a headache now because I didn't drink enough water. I didn't have electrolytes. Oh shit, I forgot my water bottle. Oh my gosh, my phone is like sweaty now and wet and I can't use the touch screen because I've had, I have so much sweat on my hands to where there's like a wet mark on my screen. I don't want all of my workouts to be that way anymore. And so I have tailored my workouts to the point where it makes me feel like I am living the soft life. So what kind of workout makes you feel like you are living the soft life? And by the way, there is no wrong answer. One is not better than the other. Um, most people who are in shape or they're skinny, they are not lifting 150 pounds every day. They're not running marathons every weekend. If you want to do those things, that's fine. But what I used to do, like a mistake that I used to make, is pressuring myself to do all of these really like uh, strenuous workouts. And I was trying so hard to stack all of these different habits all at once. And it caused me to get burnt out more easily because I was overdoing it. And what I've learned is that when it comes to the privilege stacking journey, aka your level up journey, this is a lifelong thing and you can take your time with it. Like literally, girl, you've got the rest of your life to do this. Don't worry, you've decentered men at this point, so you do not have to worry about, oh crap, I need to lose 50 pounds before Tyrone uh, moves back to my city so that I can impress him. Oh crap, I have to make sure that I grow my hair out within the next 90 days because I wanna impress so-and-so at my job. He said he doesn't like wigs and weaves, he only likes real hair, so I need to hurry up and grow out my real hair ASAP. Nope, now that we have decentered men, we do not have a time pressure anymore. We don't have um, the biological clock, like we're not, doing everything based on a biological clock. So it's okay to take your time and experiment. So like I can use my workout as an example again. So I noticed that when I was in my 20s, I did not have a gym membership, but I stayed a size four or below. And I'm five foot nine, so that's like very skinny. And I thought about it, I was like, well, how did I do that with no gym membership? And it's because I was just going on walks, just leisurely walks with no sweat or anything. I would go rain or shine. I love, I actually really like uh, walking in the rain. I love walking in the snow or kind of like walking in the city uh, when the weather is not ideal because it's even more peaceful. So I used to just get my umbrella or get my big coat on and put my hood on and I would just put my earphones in and listen to my music and I would go on a walk, especially if I lived near a lake or lived by the beach or something. I would go and have a nice, really long, peaceful walk and that was how I ended up staying skinny. So it was such a low intensity workout to where I did not get tired. And so in my 30s, I started incorporating those I, I like to call it soft life exercises. I started incorporating those soft life exercises or low intensity exercises back into my routine. And by the way, one thing that I used to do when I worked in the office was during my hour long lunch, I would go on a walk for at least 30 minutes. And I would just be walking and scrolling my phone. I would walk around the different buildings. Uh, sometimes I would walk outside. And that was just one of my ways of kind of keeping the weight off or keeping myself trim and slim because that's a part of my level up journey is I want my stomach to be flat. I want my butt to be perky. I want to be slender and you know, I just like how I look when I am more in shape. 
And I've also noticed that whenever I'm too sedentary, it just causes me to be in a bad mood. So I don't know why. I don't know if it has to do with like maybe my blood is not circulating as much or something, but I have noticed that I'm just a lot more cranky when I am just sitting in the same spot the entire day. So, but that's what I mean though when I say privilege stacking. It's about loving yourself deeply enough to where you examine yourself and you say, okay, what makes me feel the most mentally healthy? That's something you can ask yourself, like, is there something that you've always wanted to do? Like, is there a particular hobby that you've always wanted to start? I know that for me, I had always wanted to try yoga. I don't know why I always associated yoga with like, you're rich as fuck. I don't know why I think maybe it's because when I was growing up in the early 2000s, Lululemon yoga pants were like, all the rage and all of the kids in my neighborhood and they were all quote unquote rich kids they all were wearing yoga pants all the time and their moms also were wearing yoga pants and did yoga so so i remember when i was younger kind of uh fantasizing about how yeah one day like when i get super fit and stuff i'm gonna do yoga and i'm gonna be one of those cute girls that like knows how to do the little stretches and the little poses and i'm gonna have that cute body like the nice toned lean body shape and stuff. So that's what I mean. Like, is there anything where when you were a kid, you used to fantasize about wanting to do that hobby. But then as you grew up, you were like, Oh, no, that's stupid, like coloring books and stuff. Um, Maybe you were like, as a kid, you really liked doing coloring and you liked painting and you loved art class, you loved creating or looking up videos on how to draw a flower, how to draw roses, how to draw a landscape. But then as you got older, you were like, oh no, that's irresponsible. Because I know that for me, like I said, a lot of the people around me in my past, they would try to shoot me down naturally. And it's not even because they were mean people, it's because they did that to themselves. That's how they talk to themselves. They shoot themselves down. They don't allow their own inner child to come out. So when I talk about self-care, what I'm really talking about is kind of nurturing your inner child. And when I say your inner child, what I mean is who you were as a kid. Think of yourself at the most innocent phase of your life. Um, Think of yourself at the most carefree phase of your life. So for most people, it's when they were a child. But if it's not when you were a child, if it's you when you were in college or something like just think of the happiest time in your life. Was it when you were a kid? Was it when you were a teenager? Is it right now? And if so, why? Like what makes that the happiest time of your life? What were you doing in your spare time? When I was in therapy, that is the exact question that my therapist asked me. She was like, think about the happiest time in your life and what were you doing? And then I started describing it. I was like, okay, the happiest time of my life was when I was in college. And that's because I was running seven miles a day. Like I would wake up, I had my own morning routine. So I would drink my coffee. I would make a fruit smoothie. I would run seven miles a day. And then I would like start to make my own um, shampoos and conditioners. I loved like home remedies and I still do. I would go to Trader Joe's. I remember I used to walk to Trader Joe's and I would have like maybe 10 or 15 bucks and I would buy like some honey. I would get like some yogurt and I would do like different hair treatments and stuff. So I used to mix my own shampoos and conditioners. And yes, I would spend hours doing that. I would get the bentonite clay and mix it with the apple cider vinegar and I would put it on my face or on my hair because it like really restores your curls and stuff. So that's a part of why that was the happiest time in my life. I would take the little bit of money I had and I would go to the thrift store sometimes to try to see if I could like find something that would make my wardrobe look better, but I couldn't afford to go to the regular store so I can only afford the thrift store. But that was still a happy time for me because of the level of self care I was doing. And so my therapist, she was like, yeah, it's the reason that was the happiest time of your life was because you were doing a lot of self care. And so is there a way you can start doing that again? And that was how I became self aware. I started realizing that, wait a minute, my beauty, like my physical beauty is actually very important to me. And my physical beauty is a manifestation of my self care. Like my self care routine was literally my beauty treatments. And so, and that's just because it was fun for me. Like it was literally fun to see my skin get clear and like look all perfect and smooth. It was fun to see my curls popping in my hair and to see it grow, even if nobody else saw it, even if I was still putting it back in a weave or whatever, I still liked the progress that I was making. I liked 
looking at myself and saying, wow, I really do look beautiful because like my lips are all like moisturized and stuff. When I wake up, I don't have any bags under my eyes anymore because I've been like doing the gua sha and the jade roller and all that. So that is a part of what made me happy. And so I want you to think about the happiest time in your life. What was it specifically that made you happy and why? So another thing for me was going outside as a child. That's what helped me to realize that, wait a minute, no, actually I do like being in nature because I used to have that stereotype that like black people don't like going outside, black people don't like going in the woods. But then when I thought about it, I was like, wait, no, because even like in my teen years and in my 20s, I would always go outside, whether it was like going on the track in my neighborhood, like going to a high school or a middle school and going running on the track or just going on a walk in the city or going to a park and stuff and having a little blanket and doing some sit-ups on the blanket. That has always made me happy in the past. And so when you were a kid or when you were at the happiest time in your life, did you like going outside? And if so, is there a way that you can incorporate that into your life now? Even if you live in the hood, like when I lived in the ghetto, um, I still went on walks. So yes, it's you're walking through the ghetto, but I still felt like it was worth it to go on walks because I was helping my mental health. And then for the days that I didn't want to be around like the convenience store guys and stuff, then I would just drive to the nearest park or trail and I would go walking and stuff. And that would really help my mental health tremendously. And having a mentally healthy mindset, that actually helped me when it came to privilege stacking because I'm telling you guys, every single time I go outside in nature, like every time I go on a walk or do some sort of low intensity workout, I always get an idea. I always get creative ideas. Like literally this video idea came from when I went to the gym just like an hour ago. I did not have any more video ideas. I was not going to record any more videos today, but because I was doing my leisurely low intensity workout and I was just literally watching videos while I was on the bike machine then it just popped in my head. I was like, oh, I should talk about privilege stacking and like really go into depth about how to figure out your unique privilege stacking strategy and how to figure out how to optimize your own mindset and optimize your own mental health so that you can have clarity. Having mental clarity is such a powerful thing. It is so heavily underestimated. And my theory is that people who are jealous of pretty privilege in reality, they're actually jealous of your confidence. They're jealous of the confidence that comes with pretty privilege. They want that that feeling of being validated. They want that feeling of uh, being confident and powerful that comes from being the pretty girl. But in reality, that actually comes from your mental health. So yes, your mental health can be increased if you are around people who are encouraging you and validating you. But it's even more powerful when you are also validating yourself. So like with me, making my own um, hair care items and creating my own deep conditioners and stuff. That was me validating myself. You know why? Because I was telling myself my hair is beautiful or I was kind of telling myself subconsciously, even if my hair doesn't look perfect right now, it's going to look more beautiful and it's going to grow out long and it's going to be so like soft and it's going to feel good when I touch it and when I run my fingers through it. All of those things are forms of validation. I just gave myself like five compliments right there. So a lot of people don't realize that the lifestyle they are living, it's either building their self-esteem or it's destroying it. So the question for you is, is your current life, is it building your self-esteem or is it tearing it down? Is your job that you have right now, is that building your self-esteem or is it tearing you down? Are you just at your job for the money or do you feel like your job is going to help you social climb somehow? Like, are you in your career field that you really want to be in? Can you see yourself staying in that field for the rest of your life? Or are you just kind of like using your job as a stepping stone so that maybe you can kind of save up money so you can start your own business or you're just there until your YouTube channel pops off? And if you are, by the way, if you do have a YouTube channel and you're listening to this, I recommend making content every single day as much as possible and as close together as possible because that triggers the algorithm um, and then the algorithm knows like, oh, this is an actual YouTube channel. This is not just a one-off YouTube video. Like this is a channel that is driving people to watch YouTube because YouTube rewards content creators who keep the audience on the YouTube app. So part of why making longer videos for me, part of why I like doing it sometimes is because the long videos, 
That keeps people on the YouTube app longer, which ends up helping me to make a YouTube bag. So that's a, that's a tip, by the way. I hope everybody who's listening ends up creating a YouTube channel. Even if it's not about the same topic that I talk about, it could be about something, you know, whatever's important to you. But yeah, side note. But when it comes to living the soft life for me, I feel like self-care is a really big part of the soft life concept. Because I've noticed that even when ladies talk on YouTube about the soft life, Oftentimes they're talking about being financially stable and being able to invest your time caring for yourself. So I actually feel like you can do that anytime. You don't have to wait until you get married to some rich, perfect guy in order to have time to spend caring for yourself. You can do that right now. You can get yourself an adult coloring book if you're into art. Oh, and by the way, okay, so the way that I satisfy my cravings, so I call them mental health cravings. That's just the best way that I can uh, describe it. So sometimes I have a craving to satisfy my creativity and I am not an artsy person. I actually do not like painting or coloring at all. Well, it's not that I dislike it. It's just that I, I get bored from that. But I've noticed that the way that I solve my craving to be artsy is I will cook something. Like I will sometimes... Uh, get into a creative mood and then I'm like, you know what? Let me go to this cute little um, Italian grocery store right here Let me go to this little corner store and get myself some nice meats and some nice tomato sauce or something and make myself some pasta and Make some like chicken on the side or something. So that's one of the ways that I um, Meet my creativity craving is I will do it via cooking another way that I meet that craving for creativity is in terms of my beauty, I like to think of my body as a canvas. I like to think of my face as a canvas. I can paint it whatever colors I want. I can put whatever powders on it, like eyeshadow, blush, whatever, lipstick. I can put whatever I want on it to make it look cute and adorable and gorgeous. Same thing with hairstyles. That's one of the other ways that I um, solve my creativity craving. And another way that I do it is Sometimes I will randomly like rearrange furniture in my apartment or I will just start decluttering my apartment and then I'll say, hey, you know, these little fake flowers that I have from the Dollar Tree, let me put those on my desk in my bedroom because that's going to give like a pop of color or, you know, let me go get this new painting from Target. It's only like 15 bucks and then I'm going to put that up on my wall and that's going to make me feel like I live in a whole new apartment. Another thing that I do if I have a craving for creativity and I want to feel softer is I will sit down and I will paint my nails and I'll do a pedicure and I will put my feet in the little foot bath thing or maybe scrub them and stuff and just kind of like make my nails look pretty. And I love to do like different designs and stuff. I love to do like nail stickers or put little sparkles on my nails. And that is how I solve that creativity craving for myself. So in my opinion, being able to achieve the soft life is about having the, the freedom and having the time to invest in yourself as much as possible. So this could be doing productive stuff, kind of working on a, a business or something, but making it fun too, because the way that I see it is it's not that I have to create content. No, I get to create content. Like I get to come online and talk my shit and talk to the pretty girl club and I get to go to the gym and get on the cycling machine. I get to go to the park and bring my cute little yoga mat and do yoga. So one of the ways that I like to train my brain to think softer thoughts is I will actually change the language that I speak in my brain. So I won't say, oh, I have to get up, I have to go to the gym, I have to get in shape. No, I get to wake up, I get to go to the gym because I can afford it. There are plenty of people who can't. I get to go to the gym because I happen to be blessed enough to live in an apartment that has a gym or I get to go to the park and the park has a little pull-up bar or it has like little workout machines there and that is awesome that I get to go there. So I've, I've also learned how to change the language that I use when I'm kind of thinking those thoughts to myself because it helps me to stay in a space of like, I am living the soft life already. Like these, these aspects of my life are soft. For me, living the soft life doesn't mean living an empty life. So even though I love sitting by the pool and you know drinking a little mango smoothie and stuff like that, I personally don't want to do that all the time. I still consider creating content to be the soft life because I'm doing my passion and I'm able to spend more time doing my passion. 
that is one of the biggest flexes ever. Like to be able to do your passion, that is absolutely a privilege. And I do believe that every person should try to attain that privilege of being able to do your passion. And for those of you who might be thinking, oh, I don't know what my passions are. Or you might be thinking, I have a lot of passions because that's the type of person I am too, where I'm like, no, I have so many different passions. Like I love beauty stuff, hair stuff, nail stuff, makeup, but I also love creating content on YouTube. I love like uh, talking my shit. I love analyzing things, sociology, psychology. But for those of you who do not have a passion or you feel like maybe you have lost your passion or you want to figure out what your passion is, it's actually pretty simple. Um, so is there something that you already love to do? So maybe it's running, maybe it's yoga, maybe it's cooking, maybe it is reading. Um, also, what do you like to research about? What do you like to read about? Is there something that you could talk about for hours and hours? Maybe it's sports. Maybe you love watching sports. Maybe you love anime. Maybe that's your passion. You actually, you love anime and maybe you would be a fantastic content creator who talks about anime. Um, is there something where you would be willing to practice it all day long? Like maybe singing or songwriting or writing poetry. Maybe you like to perform and that's your passion. You always kind of daydream about performing something. Okay, well, is there a way that you can start to incorporate that in your life? Because for example, let's say you want to be a dancer and you've always wanted to perform. Even if you feel like, hey, I can't be a professional dancer now, you can still try to incorporate that passion into your life. You can become a Zumba teacher. You can become a dance teacher. You can join a local dance club or dance class, or you can uh, join one of those competitive dancing teams. I know that they have those for the different cultures. They have like the Filipino one. I've seen a Nigerian one perform. They have the Bollywood ones. So you can still find a way to incorporate it. Maybe you love salsa dancing and you've always wanted to do it competitively. Is there a way that you can try to incorporate that into your schedule? And by the way, there is a difference between hobbies versus passions. So a hobby is an activity that you do regularly, like in your spare time. So for me, my hobbies are walking. Um, I like yoga. I like going to the gym. I like eating fruit smoothie bowls and stuff and kind of exploring new uh, farmer's markets and new shops. A passion is a strong feeling of enthusiasm and excitement for something. So what is something that you have really strong feelings about, something you have really ex uh, strong ex excitement about? One thing I've noticed is that society and patriarchy has tried to brainwash women to only be passionate about men or to only be passionate about the possibility of a man and only have enthusiasm about that. And so that makes it very easy for you to get crushed if that man doesn't pick you. And I also feel like this whole patriarchy thing or kind of convincing women to revolve their lives around a man, I really do feel like that takes away a lot of that woman's power because instead of her being passionate about things that actually exist or being passionate about other things, she is now passionate about getting Brad to notice her or she's pas passionate about you know, getting this guy to pick her in the bar and she's spending all of these hours and all this time trying to suck it in and put on these girdles and push up bras so that she can get Scott's attention at work. And I feel like um, once you kind of decenter men, it doesn't mean that you have to isolate yourself from them unless that helps you with your mental health, then definitely do that. Um, but once you decenter men, then it's, it's giving you more mental space to start to think like, wait a minute, what would I be doing if men didn't exist? Like that's a question you'd want to answer. What would you be doing with all of your time if men did not exist? If this world only had women in it, what would you be doing in your spare time? Would you be knitting and sewing? Would you be, like for me, I would be doing this exact same thing. I would be making content. The only difference would be my content. I would not have a decentering men series, but I would still be making content. But the difference between a hobby and a passion is a hobby is something you do to kind of pass the time whereas a passion is something you cannot live without. So by the way, I think that we need both. I think it's good to have passions, like something you can't live without, but I think it's also good to have hobbies because hobbies are what makes you feel relaxed, in my opinion. Passions are something where it's like, it does make you feel relaxed, but there is also a form of discipline that comes with doing your passions and you kind of have to practice at your passion so that you can become proficient at it and get better at it 
And so you can kind of level up within your passion or within the field that you're in, whatever your passion is. And also when it comes to privilege stacking, is there a way that you can combine your passion and your hobbies? So one of my hobbies in the past was video editing and you know recording and doing social media. That was one of my hobbies in the past. And so I was able to combine my passion for talking about MLS women, and women's issues and stuff. I was able to combine the passion with the hobby. So is there a way that you can do that? Can you combine your passions and hobbies together? And if not, that's okay. Um, because a part of this whole journey and a part of this whole YouTube channel is it's to help you become more self-aware and figure out how you want to do your privilege stacking journey, how you want your life to look. And another thing is why do you want to privilege stack? Why do you want to improve your life? Like that's a good question to ask. Like for me, I want to improve my life because my mental health is important to me and I feel like having a good life that I enjoy, um, that actually improves my mental health. And then when I have good mental health, that helps me to feel confident enough to want to change the world and to want to talk about whatever I am like passionate about. That's what gives me confidence and gives me self-esteem is having the mental health. And so for me, having like, time to spend on my hobbies and being able to do things that refresh me and that fill my cup, that is important to me because I want to be able to pour into others and I can't pour from an empty cup. So the question I want to ask you is what fills your cup? Because that's going to be very important for you on your social climbing journey. You want to always be able to operate from a cup that is full. So what is it that makes you feel like a bad bitch? What makes you feel like you are organized and like you are just crushing it in life? I know that for me, having a grocery store schedule, it's like really random, but <laughs> having a schedule where it's like, okay, on Saturday I go to Trader Joe's and then next time I'm gonna go to Whole Foods and then after that I'm gonna explore a new grocery store. Having a grocery store schedule and then going and getting like these healthy items like fruits and vegetables and stuff and then coming home and snacking on the fruits and vegetables and knowing that like I'm eating healthy, I'm going to look better, my body's gonna look great, I get to post cute pictures on Instagram and it's gonna help me to get my bags because now I could potentially use my Instagram photos to get sponsors and stuff. Like, that's why I call it privilege stacking because a lot of these people that we look up to, they have had to stack so many different skills and so many different habits in order to get to where they are. Think about, I don't know, your favorite performer, your favorite politician, your favorite artist, your favorite author, your favorite person who creates anime, uh, your favorite makeup brand, think of the person who created that makeup brand. Those people had to stack privileges and they had to stack their habits so that they could create that makeup brand. So they had to maybe wake up earlier than normal. Maybe they had to study like, okay, how do I market a makeup brand? Or what are the trends right now in the industry? Or how can I get myself in the right rooms and get around the right people so that I can create this brand. And what are my passions? Am I like a vegan person? Do I want to make a vegan makeup brand? Those people have thought about their dreams and goals and they have spent a lot of time pursuing them. And so leveling up, it is a 24 seven, 365 lifestyle. And by the way, it's a very fun lifestyle. So I don't want you to like listen to this and, and feel like, oh, I'm overwhelmed or anything. Cause no, it's supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, you're, you're doing it wrong. In my opinion, if it's not fun, you're probably, um, overextending yourself or you're not doing it in a carefree feminine way. When I say like a carefree feminine way, what I really mean is you are kind of in more of a state of receiving when it comes to level up, leveling up. So for example, when I go and do my yoga, I'm doing the yoga so that I can work out, yes, but that's also a secondary reason. I'm really doing yoga so that I can take in the sounds of nature, so I can like breathe in the fresh air, so I can do the poses and feel the blood flowing and like feel the headache going away and I can feel my muscles loosening up. So I'm in kind of a state of receiving. That's what I mean when I say leveling up should be done from kind of this feminine space this space of feeling open, not feeling overwhelmed and tired all the time. And like, Oh, I, ha I just have to work super hard. And don't get me wrong. Like if you have a passion and you are really building for yourself, because in my opinion, 
I actually think that women are the true protectors and providers and builders. So I actually do think that uh, for, for women, it is in our nature to be natural builders. But I think that when it comes to filling up your cup and kind of like replenishing yourself, it should be done from a feminine space. So when I am doing yoga and stuff, I want to look cute when I'm doing my yoga and I want to have a cute little matching outfit because that makes me feel beautiful. I like feeling beautiful. I like looking at myself in the mirror and seeing myself with a cute pink shirt on. I like how I feel in my comfy yoga outfit and I like how my ponytail looks, my drawstring ponytail. I like how it looks when I look in the mirror. It makes me feel beautiful. So I guess when I say doing it from a feminine perspective, I'm saying like, incorporating how you feel into things because what I have learned is how I feel actually affects how how I'm going to behave and how I'm going to show up and so that's why I said if I feel inspired I want to act on that in my opinion that's something feminine like feeling a certain way acting on it and then kind of taking advantage of that inspiration and saying, hey, I just feel artsy right now. I feel inspired. I feel like talking about privilege stacking and leveling up and kind of going more into depth about that. So I'm just going to sit down and record right now. And I'm just going to talk about whatever is on my heart. And actually, that's a good point. And I don't even consider myself a spiritual person. But thinking about it like, okay, deep down in your heart, like, what are your heart's desires? In my opinion, that's kind of a feminine way of viewing it. Like I said, I don't really um, consider myself spiritual, but I just feel like using the term feminine is like the best way to describe it. But thinking to myself, what is my heart's desire for my life? What is my heart's desire for my beauty? What is my heart's desire for how I want my apartment to look or my room or my living space? How do I want that to look? Even if I don't have all the money I want right now, um, at my current financial level, how can I make my life as soft as possible for me? How can I be my own protector and provider? How can I nurture myself? So I'm kind of I'm kind of starting to go back into that whole um, taking care of your inner child. That's just the best way I can describe it. Like, how can I nurture my inner child? Maybe I didn't have a mother figure when I was growing up. Maybe I have a lot of mother wounds. So how can I mother myself? If I were five years old right now, what would I do for myself to make myself feel loved, cherished, appreciated? Okay, so I would go out to the park. Okay, so let me actually do that. Let me get my stuff and, you know, pack my yoga mat in my car and go drive to the nearest park and just go walk around. Um, maybe I'll bring my little Stanley cup and have some water in there with some lemon so I'm like nourishing my body and getting hydrated. That's what I mean when I say nurturing your inner child. It's about learning how to mother yourself. And if you have daddy issues, learning how to father yourself. So for example, the way that I would father myself, and this is just the best way I can describe it, when I think of a father, a good father, I think of someone who teaches me discipline. So someone who gives me structure. So how can I father myself? Well, I can give myself structure. I can say, every morning I'm going to wake up and I'm going to start recording by 8 a.m. And then I'm going to take my lunch at 12 noon and then I'm going to be done by 3 p.m. And then I can do whatever I want the rest of the day. That is my way of fathering myself. So if you have father wounds and you never knew what it was like to have a good father, you can start to think in your head, what qualities do I think a good father would have and how can I utilize those qualities for myself? So if I think a good father is disciplined or I think a good father would protect me, what can I do to protect myself? Well, I can start blocking people from my comment section. That will protect me. That'll protect my um, my sanity, first of all. It'll protect my space because my YouTube channel is supposed to be a safe space, not just for the women on it, but also for myself. So how can I protect myself? That's a form of fathering myself. I am protecting myself from threatening like people. I'm protecting myself physically as well. So let's say you live in a bad household with uh, threatening people. You can decide, okay, this is my way of reparenting myself and fathering myself. I'm going to have the discipline to get up and work or make as much money as I can through selling stuff or whatever. And then I'm going to take my money and I'm going to go move out and I'm going to go get myself my own living space. I'm going to go get a small studio apartment. I don't care if it's the size of a shoebox. At least it's mine, and at least I can live by myself. That's an example of fathering yourself. That is a huge mental advantage. 
that will definitely help you on your privilege stacking and social climbing journey. The fact that you don't really need anybody else, honestly, because you can be your own best friend. You are your own mother. You are your own father. You are your own best friend. Or at least that's what I've utilized. Like that's how I like to think about it. And that was kind of the best way I could could uh, describe it in terms of rebuilding my self-esteem or rebuilding my confidence and kind of healing my traumas so that I can fill my cup so that I have the energy to go after my dreams or to figure out what they are so that I can enrich my life. One thing that I've learned is that my life is what I make it. I'm the only one who is living my life. And so if my life is boring, I have to point the finger to myself. If my life sucks, if I don't have anything exciting going on, well, it's because I probably didn't schedule anything exciting or I didn't look up when the museum hours are so I could go to a free museum. Like I didn't put in any effort. So oftentimes I've noticed that when girls feel like they are leveled down, oftentimes it's because they just haven't invested in themselves enough. They haven't looked within themselves and said, wait a minute, what is my heart's desire? Like deep down inside, what would make me happy? What would please my inner child? Would it be going to the park? Would it be going to a yoga class? Would it be interacting with other people? Because that's something that I noticed is very important for me because I am an extrovert. Um, I need to interact with other people. That is one of my emotional needs. So, but the way that I meet that need though, it's actually very easy. All I have to do is I can go to the gym. I can go to a yoga class, like if my city has any free uh, yoga classes and stuff, which they do, they have free yoga, free Pilates, I can go to one of those free classes or free events. I don't have to have a full blown conversation with every single stranger that I come into contact with, but simply going to a place where there are other people who also came by themselves, that helps to satisfy my desire for social interaction and stuff like that. So that's what I mean when I say reparenting yourself and restoring your own mental health and restoring your own self-esteem so that you have the inner power, like the willpower to go after other things that are like kind of bigger and to keep building up over time. Because a lot of people lack willpower, not because they're bad people and not because they are undisciplined, but it's really because they have mental illnesses oftentimes. Like they, they're, all of their energy is being taken up either by other people, by energy vampires, family members, friends, boyfriend, children, sisters, whoever, toxic people, or all of their mental and emotional energy is being taken up by trying to manage their own mental illnesses, whether it's PTSD, anxiety, depression, whatever. And so they they don't even have the willpower to work out in the gym. They don't even have the willpower to uh, cook a healthy meal or meal prep and stuff because they haven't even started working on getting mentally healthy. So they don't have the mental clarity to make better decisions. And so this channel is really supposed to focus on helping you to gain back a sense of identity, helping you to gain back a sense of validation and helping you to restore your mental clarity. So for me, those have been some foundational things like reparenting myself, um, thinking about what would please my inner child, asking myself like, okay, what are my passions? And then what are my hobbies? A lot of people do not have hobbies or they have hobbies that are like boring, like scrolling your phone all day or, you know, you're not really, um, you're not really looking deep within yourself and saying, okay, is my heart's deepest desire to scroll my phone all day, every single Saturday? Is that really what I want? Do I only want to watch Netflix movies all day, like for eight hours a day? Like, I can understand if I want to watch a Netflix movie at night or I just want to watch it at 8 p.m. or something. But for 12 or 16 hours a day, is that really my heart's desire? Or if I could think of what my life would be like in an ideal world, what would I rather be doing? Would I rather be getting taken out on a date right now by some guy, some hot guy? Would I rather be, I don't know, exploring the city or something? I'm just kind of coming up with random things. There is no wrong answer but only you can answer that within yourself. So a lot of people who lack willpower, what they really lack is introspection. And by the way, I'm not throwing shade at anyone because I'm talking to myself too. But one thing that helped me to increase my willpower in general was by working towards restoring my mental health and then restoring my physical health too. So like trying to eat better and stuff and trying to make everything fun. Because like I said, 
the level up journey and the social climbing journey, it's fun. It's fun to see the the progress that you make. It's fun to see that new body that you built in the gym. It's fun to see the new apartment that you saved up money for. It's really amazing to see your own progress and to see that you finally did move to that dream city. You finally did go back to school or finish school or you got that job that you really wanted. That is what social climbing and privilege stacking is all about because you do have privileges. You're just not seeing them. And so this series is meant to help you see what privileges you have or don't have. And then it's to help you assess within yourself, okay, which privileges do I want to work on attaining? Okay, I want to attain thin privilege. Like I want more thin privilege. That's important to me. I like that. I like how I feel when I have a lot of thin privilege. Okay, for somebody else, it might be, I want the privilege of not living in the hood anymore. I've grown up in the hood. I've lived in the hood my whole life. And now I want to save up my money to get an apartment that's in the suburbs. But there is no wrong answer. And this is just kind of my uh, long, detailed introduction into the concept of privilege stacking and how to do it and really getting into the nitty gritty of how you can get on your level up lifestyle. And it's supposed to be fun, by the way. Um, Social climbing is supposed to be fun, like raising your status in life is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be something that should be done from more of a feminine space, in my opinion, as opposed to your toiling and stressing out and like, you know, getting all angry and frustrated all the time. No, like the way that I've done it for myself is just doing it in a carefree way. So I'm doing it in a way where it's like I'm I'm exploring uh, different hobbies. I'm exploring different sides of myself. So I'll be like, hey, I want to try yoga this weekend. Okay, maybe I'll try Pilates next weekend. Okay, I didn't really like Pilates, so maybe I will try spin class. Oh, wow, I really like spin class. I'm going to go back again. So it's not about looking at yourself as a success or failure because I feel like black and white thinking in general, um, it's not very helpful. I think it's, it's more helpful on your level up journey to not think of things as, oh, I succeeded or no, I failed. No, you succeeded or you learned. You learned how to do it differently. You learned what you don't want to do. You learned how to eliminate that workout class that you didn't like. So now you don't have to worry about going back every week for that class. Now you get to spend that same time going to a different class or doing a different level up pretty girl activity. But anyway, what do you ladies think? What are your goals for leveling up? What are your goals for social climbing and privilege stacking Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.